Hi everyone, my name is Mark Quinn. I'm a cross-border tax advisor and financial planner with the Spectrum IFA group based in Portugal. And in today's video, I'm going to look at 10 common financial planning mistakes when relocating to Portugal. So the first one is planning too late. What we see a lot of is that People are more reactive with their financial planning rather than being proactive. So ideally you want to be planning the move to Portugal before you even arrived here. If you start planning after you've established residency here, a lot of the financial planning opportunities and the windows for planning have already been closed. So as I say, make sure you're taking advice very early in the process and ideally before you've left your home country. The other common planning mistake is sinking your assets for a different financial system. So you may have, for example, tax efficient investments in the country you're, you're living in at the moment. And an example of that would be individual savings accounts in the UK. They're very tax efficient. If you're a UK tax resident, they don't work for Portugal. So just make sure that you're reviewing each of your investments, your pensions and other assets, and make sure you have a clear understanding of how they're treated when you, when you do relocate to Portugal. Third common mistake, we see it quite a lot, is not applying for the non-habitual residence scheme. Now the non-habitual residence scheme is a 10 year tax incentivized scheme for new residents of the country. So the main qualifying condition there is that you haven't been a tax resident here in the last five years. If you meet that condition, you're effectively eligible for the, the NHR program. Uh, what we have seen is people either don't um, apply for the scheme, or they miss the deadline. So the deadline is the 31st of March following the year that you get residency here. Or um, even worse, they've actually been advised by other professionals not to apply for the NHR regime. Now I've never seen a case where somebody will be worse off by applying for the NHR regime. It's always a financial no brainer. Number four on the list is withdrawal strategies. So taking money from the wrong place at the wrong time. An example of that, which relates to point one on, on the common planning mistakes list, is that people may, for example, delay taking tax-free cash from their pension schemes until they come to Portugal. But the concept of tax-free cash doesn't exist in Portugal. So if you want to take advantage of that, 25% tax-free cash amount, which is now called the Pension Commencement Lump Sum, you need to take it whilst you're still in the UK. Uh, otherwise, when, when you leave the UK, the 25% tax-free cash entitlement disappears. Another example would be taking money from ISAs when you're in Portugal. So if you were to take ISAs out while you're in the UK, it, you could do so tax-free. Again, when you come to Portugal, if you're crystallising gains within ISA accounts, they're going to be subject to capital gains tax. And then the income payments arising from the ISA may also be subject to tax here under income tax rules, even if you're an NHR. Not paying attention to fees and charges is another um, issue, particularly in Europe, because we don't have the same regulations um, and restrictions that you do in the UK, where a commission was effectively abolished in 2012. Um, in Europe, commission is still widely used um, and in some cases we've seen really high commission payments taken from clients' funds which has had a detrimental impact on their, their eventual fund values when they come to draw the benefits from the schemes. So just make sure you, you do have a clear understanding of what you're paying and to whom. Focusing on return and ignoring the risk associated with that return is another common problem we see. Um, so for example, you could have two different investment funds, each achieving 5% a year growth, but if one's a very high risk portfolio and the other one is a very low risk portfolio, then clearly one is, is superior to the other, even though on the surface they look to be doing the same thing. So again, um, make sure you're looking at the risk levels associated with your underlying investments as well as the return. Not knowing your number is another issue we see with many clients. Um, and this can come in two forms. So it can either be spending too much because you don't really have a, a clear understanding of how much you can afford to spend. Or conversely, it could be spending too little. Um, some clients worry unduly that their, their funds won't last their lifetimes. And so they, they restrict their spending and, and their lifestyles. 
So we can do cash flow model modeling to help you um, plan for the future. We can put different variables in terms of what expected returns we can see, inflation numbers, tax rates, etc. And that will give you a better understanding and a clearer picture of how much you can actually safely afford to take and draw down from your investment pots. The next problem we see issues around is reviews. Now you want to make sure that you're reviewing your finances on a regular basis, but you don't want to be doing it too often um, on, for, for two reasons really. Firstly, looking at investment portfolios on too frequent a basis is both futile, but also it can cause undue concern because you, you're, you, you get caught up in the short term volatility of markets. And also, if you're implementing changes too frequently, those changes are going to incur costs, and costs are ultimately going to erode your investment returns. So as I say, there's a balancing act, and you want to review, but not too often. Not shopping around and comparing the markets on on regular basis is another issue we see. So some clients will end up with a, a set portfolio or investment, and they will ma maintain it irrespective of what happens in the environment. So if more competitive funds or structures become available, they still stick with what they know. Uh, what we would encourage you to do is just make sure you're shopping around regularly and comparing what you have versus alternative options out there on the market. And the final mistake we see is for UK nationals um, not having an understanding of inheritance tax implications. A lot of people we meet assume that once they've left the UK, uh, their liability to UK inheritance tax disappears, which unfortunately is not the case because UK inheritance tax is based on what's called your domicile and your domicile is effectively, effectively where you originate from. So if you're a UK national, you're more than likely going to have a UK domicile, domicile of origin for the rest of your life and therefore the default position is you'll always remain subject to UK inheritance tax and that will be on your worldwide estate, not just the assets in the UK but on your worldwide um, assets. There are steps you can take to plan around inheritance tax and we can guide you through those if that's something that's of interest. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much.